Hi all, welcome to another video of the subject power system analysis and we are on uh, module 6 and in the last video we have discussed the equal area criterion and its uh, principle concept uh, and uh, today uh, we are going to discuss the special case of that is the transient stability analysis for a sudden change in mechanical input okay using this uh, equal area criterion. So uh, this is a single line diagram we are considering. Okay, we are considering a generator, a single generator feeding energy to an uh, infinite bus. Okay, so the electrical power transmitted by the generator, okay, can be written by using the power angle equation. We know, okay, already we have learned the power angle equation. So the equation will be P is equal to uh, mod E into mod V divided by X into sin delta. Uh, well, uh, this mod E into mod V divided by X is equal to the maximum power P max. So, P is equal to P max into sin delta. So, uh, <coughs> let the generator be operating in steady state with a torque angle of delta 0. Okay, we are assuming. Okay, the generator is operating in the steady state with a torque angle of delta 0. At this condition, the mechanical power input is P M 0 <coughs> and the electrical power output is P E 0. Okay. Under an ideal condition, uh, we can say the mechanical power input P M 0 will be equal to P E 0. Okay. If we are uh, eliminating the, uh, okay, if we are neglecting the losses and all, okay, considering the ideal condition, P M 0 will be equal to P E 0. So, uh, from this equation, okay, using this equation P E is equal to P max into sin delta, we can say, okay, the equation will be P M 0 equal to P E 0 equal to P max into sin delta 0. Okay, so this is the power angle curve of the generator. Okay, we have discussed uh, in this uh, the previous slides. Okay, so this is the power angle equation in the x-axis. We are ha having this delta torque angle in the y-axis. We are having the electrical power output P E. Okay, so uh, in this the point A. Okay, the point A will be the uh, steady state operating point. Okay that is uh, based on the previous condition okay p p m zero is equal to p e zero equal to p max sin delta zero okay so here uh, the ideal condition is we are assuming that mechanical power input is equal to electrical power output okay so this is the uh, operating point steady state operating point where p is equal to is equal to p e zero is equal to p m zero at a torque angle of delta zero so the speed okay speed at this point at this operating point will be the synchronous speed omega s okay so let the uh, mechanical input okay mechanical input to the generator rotor be suddenly increased to pm1 okay so here you can see this is the operating point current operating point okay so if uh, due to some adjustment in the prime over and all if you are increasing the mechanical power input okay if you are increasing the mechanical power input uh, what happens is the mechanical power will be more than the electrical power okay beyond this point if you are increasing the mechanical power input the mechanical power will be more than the electrical power okay so the generator will have an accelerating power okay will have an accelerating power p a okay we know that okay a p a will be there and that p a will be equal to p a is equal to p m 1 minus p okay P A is equal to P M 1 minus P E. Okay. And where P E is equal to P max into sin delta that we know. And uh, P M 1 is the corresponding uh, the uh, latest mechanical power input. Okay. P A is equal to P M 1 minus P. And uh, from this curve, uh, we know that uh, due to the accelerating power, the rotor speed increases. Okay. So this portion, okay, from this A to B is the accelerating portion. Okay, the due to the accelerating power, the rotor speed increases, and so the rotor angle also increases. Okay, rotor angle uh, delta. Okay, rotor angle delta also increases. Okay, so this results in increased electrical power generation. Okay, therefore the operating point will move upwards along the power angle curve okay so at point uh, the present point is a so if the mechanical power 
input is increasing the operating point will move okay along this power angle curve and reach at point b okay so at point b again the mechanical power pm1 okay the pm1 will be equal to pe1 okay where pe1 is the electrical power output corresponding to the torque angle the torque angle delta 1 okay so from this point from this point a uh, we are we have increased the uh, mechanical power input okay uh, by some adjustments and due to that the rotor speed increases and the rotor angle increases rotor angle increases to delta 1 then the corresponding electrical power also increases and it reaches a value pm pe1 so at this particular point if you are considering the ideal condition this pe1 will be equal to pm1 okay and uh, now the rotor angle cannot stay at this point at this point b okay because the inertia of the rotor will make the rotor to oscillate with respect to the point b okay so hence the torque angle delta will continue to increase till point c due to the inertia action all and all it will continue to increase till point c okay when the operating point moves from b to c the electrical power is more than the mechanical power okay therefore the power pa the accelerating power the difference in power pa is negative and it is called decelerating power okay decelerating power that is we know the equation of pa okay equation of pa is equal to uh, p sorry uh, pa okay pa will be equal to pm1 minus pe okay so what happens here is uh, the at the point b the rotor triangle will not stay here so the rotor triangle will increase so due to the increase in rotor triangle uh, corresponding electrical power also increases so uh, the electrical power will be more than the uh, mechanical power by considering the ideal condition only okay so this one if this p is greater than pm1 this pa will be negative and it is called decelerating power okay so in this region that is from b to c the rotor angle delta increases okay but the rotor speed decreases this angle de delta increases from delta 1 to delta 2 but the rotor speed decreases due to this decelerating power okay so the point c is decided by the damping of the system okay because the oscillations in the rotor are reduced by damping so at point c the speed of the rotor will be equal to the synchronous speed okay so at point a the speed is synchronous speed omega s from point a to b speed increases and then from point b to c the speed decreases once again at the point c the speed is equal to the synchronous speed omega s okay so uh, as shown in the figure 5.8 the area a1 okay this area a1 is the acceleration area and the area a2 this area okay this area will be the deceleration area so the equal area criterion says that we know that uh, the system is stable okay system is stable uh, the condition is the integral of delta 0 to delta 2 okay from this figure delta 0 to delta 2 integral of delta 0 to delta 2 p a d delta is equal to 0 okay that we have already learned in the previous videos okay delta 0 to delta 2 integral p a delta 0 to delta 2 p a d delta will be equal to 0 okay so to satisfy this condition these two areas a1 and a2 should be equal okay that we have uh, mentioned here okay to satisfy this equation okay the acceleration area a1 should be equal to the deceleration area a2 when the oscillations die out the system will settle to a new state in this new state pm1 is equal to pe1 pm1 is equal to pe1 actually in the figure we have to settle down at the point b okay but it it is not happening there because the rotor angle inc delta increases due to some uh, action that is the inertia action and all okay but finally after the uh, after occurring the damping and all 
right? You will settle down to a point B where P1 is equal to Pm1. Okay, due to the decelerating power and all, it will settle down at the point uh, B. Okay, so P1 is equal to P1, Pm1 is equal to P1 is equal to Pm1 into sine delta 1, that we know. Okay, so the areas A1 and A2 can be evaluated as shown below. Okay, so the area A1 is, from this figure, A1 is this area, that is delta 0 to delta 1, and the, the area A2 is delta 1 to delta 2. Okay, so a1 is delta 0 to delta 1, pm1 minus p d delta. Instead of this pa, instead of this pa, we are writing pm1 minus pe. Okay. Uh, so a2 is delta 1 to delta 2, p minus pm1 d delta. Okay. Because in this, uh, during this area, that is, we are assuming that the pe will be greater than. Okay. So for making it a positive value, we are writing pe first. So p minus pm1 into d delta where p is equal to p max into sin delta okay so uh, from the above equations uh, about dis discussions and all we can say that there is an upper limit for increase in mechanical power input pm okay we can't increase the mechanical power uh, by a, uh, beyond a certain level okay so there will be an upper limit for pm okay so, as the mechanical power is increased, a limiting condition is finally reached at a point where the area A1 equals the area above this Pm1 into P max. That is from this figure. Okay. From this figure, it is clear that. Okay. So, we can't increase the mechanical power input Pm1 max uh, beyond a particular value. Okay, so as the mechanical power is increased, a limiting condition is finally reached at a point where the area A1, this area A1 equals the area above Pm1 into max, that is area A2 here. Okay, A2 here. So the corresponding delta can be this delta 1 max. Okay delta 1 max that is uh, according to the equal area criterion for systems to be stable these two areas should be equal that is acceleration area should be equal to deceleration area okay so we can't further increase the p the mechanical power input beyond a particular value okay so if we are increasing the mechanical power input beyond a particular value these two areas will be unequal okay unequal so so for making the two area equal there should be a particular value of mechanical power input it is treated as pm1 into max pm1 into max at the corresponding delta value delta 1 max okay so under this condition uh, the delta 2 okay delta 2 takes the maximum value of delta 2 max this is delta 1 max and this is delta 2 max so at this condition this area Okay, that is the acceleration area equal to the deceleration area, A1 is equal to A2. Okay, hence we can write this delta 2 max as, that is delta 2, delta 2 max as, this is pi, so pi minus, pi minus delta 1 max. Okay, pi minus delta 1 max. Okay, actually it is written in the next slide okay the delta 2 max can be written as pi minus delta 1 into max okay so we know that the electrical power p is equal to p max into uh, sine delta okay so from that equation p1 okay p1 max equal to pm1 max equal to by treating the ideal conditions p1 equal to pm1 okay it will be equal to p max into sine delta 1 max the angle becomes delta 1 max okay so, so the sine delta 1 max equal to pm1 max by p max okay from this equation pm1 max by p max or delta 1 max will be equal to sine waves of pm1 max by p max okay so um, uh, the delta 2 max can be written from this equation as pi minus instead of this delta 1 max we can write sine waves of pm1 max by p max okay so this is the uh, maximum value of delta 1 max and this is the maximum value of delta 2 for the system to be stable that is for making the two areas equal okay so uh, actually uh, from this figure 
5.9 okay we can say that any further increase in pm1 max will make the area a2 okay will make the area a2 less than this area a1 okay so at this particular point at this delta 1 max this a1 will be equal to a2 okay if uh, any further increase in the mechanical power input that is if this pm1 is increasing okay beyond this point this a2 will be less than this a1 okay so this means that the acceleration power okay acceleration power is more than the deceleration power and the system will have an excess kinetic energy which causes the uh, rotor angle okay to increase beyond the point c okay beyond the particular point c that make the system unstable okay so it is important to note that the system will remain stable even though the rotor may oscillate beyond delta is equal to 90 degree as long as the equal area criterion is met okay so hence the condition of delta equal to 90 degree for stability is applicable only for steady state stability and not for transient stability okay not for transient stability so here uh, we are this we have discussed the transient stability so here uh, if this a1 is equal to a2 then we can say that the system is stable okay so uh, that's condition uh, we are not concentrating on the uh, the value delta okay delta equal to 90 degree in the previous slides and all sorry in the previous videos okay when we have discussed the power angle uh, we have derived that for the systems to be stable the delta uh, will be equal to 90 degree okay so according to this equal area criterion okay equal area criterion the system will remain stable even though the rotor may oscillate beyond the angle delta equal to 90 degree that is this is the delta equal to 90 degree okay so the system will be stable beyond the angle delta equal to 90 degree okay as long as the equal area criterion as long as the equal area criterion is met okay so we can say that the condition of delta equal to 90 degree okay for stability is only applicable to the steady state stability not for this case of transient stability okay so that's the point to be uh, remember so I hope all of you understand the condition well, uh, so thank you.